F. Mr. Collins Lizualo, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, of the media. The Road Accident Fund was established uh, to provide compensation for loss or damage wrongfully caused on the road. The compensation is to provide relief to those whose livelihoods have been uh, disrupted or lives lost as consequence of crash on the road. There is no better articulation of the mandate of RAF than the words of Judge Mayer when he handed down judgment on a matter of the writs of execution uh, against the RAF on the 9th of April 2021. In granting the temporary stay as a necessary measure to obviate the implosion of the RAF, which will trigger a constitutional crisis, Judge Mayer said, I quote, no imagination is required to fathom the likely dire situation of thousands of injured and compensated road accident victims. The social security net for all road users and their dependents will then fall away, close quote. We have been emphatic that the words of the judge aptly captured the magnitude of the crisis at hand, which reinforced our intent to move with speed and the resolute determination in not only turning the tide, but in ushering in a sustainable policy trajectory insofar as compensation for victims of road traffic accidents are concerned. The final report of the Satchwell Commission on Road Accident Fund in 2002 set the scene for policy review in relation to compensation resulting from road crashes. The Commission was incisive in its analysis of the RAF scheme and its predecessors. Over the years, despite legislative interventions and appointment of seven commissions of inquiry, seven commissions of inquiry, the system has failed to achieve its objectives. One of the main reasons for the failure of the system is that since its commencement, the basis of the compensation system introduced by the Motor Vehicle Accident Act of 1984 has remained relatively unchanged. Despite numerous legislative interventions to change certain liability provisions in the law, the RAF currently administers the fault-based MVA compensation system which it inherited from its predecessors in terms of the Road Accident Fund Act. The RAF pays compensation to injured road users for personal bodily injuries and pays compensation to dependents of breadwinners that have been killed in motor vehicle accidents. The existing fault system, based system, was the subject of 1998 white paper on the road accident fund and uh, was investigated by the Satchwell Commission in 2002. In its final report, the Commission described the system as unreasonable, inequitable, unaffordable, and unsustainable. It was on the basis of the findings and recommendations of the Satchwell Commission that cabinet approved the policy for the road accident benefit scheme referred to as RAPS on 7 September 2011, effectively replacing the 1998 white paper on, on RAF. This is South Africa's national policy, which unambiguously requires of us to integrate the social insurance provided by RAF into the country's overall social security system. The policy reasons that uh, the structure of the current system encourages perverse incentives. There is no financial incentive for injured accident victims to return to work or 
to undergo rehabilitation. A major driving force under the current system is to attempt to present the claimant to the RAF as a permanently disabled and maimed person, irrespective of the actual condition, whose capacity for earning an income and living a quality life has been irretrievably harmed. This is done in an attempt to secure the highest possible monetary reward from public funds. This policy proposes that the RAPS should provide a scheme of structured and defined benefits to those seriously affected by road accidents in accordance with social insurance principles and not liability insurance principles. By not providing a benefit to the full extent of the loss, RAPS will encourage the injured person to return to work and will reduce a culture of dependency. It was for this reason that we proposed the transformation of the RAF through the RAPS bill, which was meant to give practical expression to the vision of the current uh, policy. The current policy promotes equitable social safety net, accountability for road accident victims in South Africa. The RAPS bill was rejected by Parliament in 2002, and the process to reintroduce the legislation will address the issues that led to its rejection. On an annual basis, I conclude a performance agreement with the board of the RAF. This agreement identifies priorities for the year, which are included in the entity's annual performance plan. The agreement signed with the board for the 2021-22 financial year include the following priorities. Approval and implementation of a new business operating model, settling of new personal claims within 120 days, accelerating settling of claims that are three years and older, reduction of legal costs, implementing prescribed medical tariffs, develop medical treatment protocols, implement measures to enhance the current system, improve financial sustainability. And that is why we are here today. And uh, the CEO and the chairperson of the board and the board in general will give an update in relation to the developments, which some may be constrained by the court processes that RAF has embarked upon, which they have fully briefed the minister about. And uh, I have had an opportunity to engage with regard to this process and at the same time try to say, can we have mediation and resolve this matter outside court uh, processes? Unfortunately, we have been unable to do so. But uh, the reason for rough proceeding to court, the board and the CEO will be able to give adequate reasons to you. And uh, it is unprecedented because uh, when you take the AG to court, people think that cannot be done. But these things get to be done uh, in a democratic country like ours and uh, in safeguarding national interest uh, and so on. We must understand the context of the interventions we are, we are implementing to turn the RAF around and ensure its uh, sustainability. The RAF has operated on a financially unsustainable model for a number of decades. We have a debt here that we can't account for, and we must accept it. And uh, I've appointed the new board with regard to what they will say, you will also see. Uh, this place was wrecked, and it's the first, second time we have a press conference here. It was a total disaster when we came in. And uh, Lituano uh, has been fighting battles. It's not a nice place to be at. And uh, I took him as one of the best I have in the Department of Transport and deployed him here because I know he will get the job done. And uh, he's not been working on roses. He's fighting, he's been fought. But the battle is engaged in with the board. They understand it is on behalf of South Africans and the poorest of the poor the people who must get assistance out of RAF. And uh, they've been rough themselves, as RAF says, you know, uh, in terms of dealing with the situation. We don't have friends, unfortunately, in many places. 
and today will debunk the lies and the myth and they will speak for themselves that uh, we are in favor of this and that. So when we talk about the financial position, it is unfortunate that uh, we have to go this route and uh, that they have to go this route uh, in terms of the AG. Uh, my desire is that these issues can be resolved uh, outside the courts and then uh, we find each other in terms of standards and uh, in terms of the bodies uh, for checks and balances. Uh, that they resolve on these particular matters. But nobody's going to die and there will be no floor, there will be no blood on the floor. At the end of the day, a review is a review if we can't find each other on the policy matters. And then uh, we defer to the courts to intervene. Uh, that is what uh, it is important. The RAF has operated, like I said, on a financially unsustainable model for a number of decades. There has not been a nexus between the fuel levy and the number of accidents that occur on public roads. However, to exacerbate this challenge, uh, there has been the ever-increasing administrative costs of the RAF scheme. Of the revenue RAF collects, more than 17 billion rand, or 40% of this goes to administrative costs. I want to repeat, of the revenue RAF collects, more than 17 billion rand, or 40% of this goes to administrative costs, with only 26 billion, or 60% is actually received uh, by claimants. Currently, the RAF biggest cost driver is the number of road accidents that occur on public roads uh, daily. Bringing RAF back to financial stability requires both a regulatory overall and operational improvement. The regulatory overall is mandated by the RAPS policy, which requires of us to complete the transformation of the RAF into a benefit scheme that is fully integrated into the broader social security net. We have given the green light to the board to move with speed in adopting a new business operating model. You were here when I was briefing you about that. Um, and uh, I went to Parliament, I as well went to Cabinet. And uh, I did brief you that um, we have this operating model, and then uh, for us to implement that fully, it means that uh, it must pass through the AG and all of that. And uh, we have had a green light from PwC, and not through the stroke of a pen, that policy was amended and implemented by PwC. But uh, uh, whether that is an opinion or what, it's a matter that we can clarify uh, in the courts. But I've seen that. Uh, to illustrate uh, the quantum of the challenge that stifles the RAF from the effective implementation of its mandate of the 41 billion fuel levy it receives, 10.6 billion goes towards legal costs. 10.6 billion goes towards legal costs. And uh, some of the people who are injured don't even get the share of the lion's share of this money. It goes to the lawyers. So you see people driving expensive cars here. Uh, it's money of RAF. And that is the truth, you must know. Uh, and uh, half of that money does not go to the beneficiaries uh, in this country. Uh, it goes to individuals, to law firms, and all of that. We are straightening that up in terms of the law. And that is the mandate I've given to this board to implement. And uh, they've got that mandate to implement. It is for the on behalf of South Africa. We have been ripped off and ripping ourselves off through a scheme that uh, we need to straighten up. Now, when you deal with transformation and changing things, you don't work on roses. Uh, you don't walk on roses. Uh, you, you walk through a path which long after you are gone, people will thank you. This is not a country of cowardice. We stand for principle. And that is what we do, and we are accountable. So we're not running a spaza shop. In some instances, operations within RAF are suspended due to the attorneys attaching some of the RAF's uh, assets. I've also, in terms of the National Department, been a victim of this. You have seen in the press uh, and all of that. These are the, the, the things that actually happened. 
The provision of medical attention is also a problem due to lack of harmonization and standardization of medical attention rendered uh, to road accident victims. It is for this reason that this matter is part of the priorities we have agreed the board must give focused attention. We have also identified the need to deal with money spent uh, on providing for medical attention to victims of car crashes. Uh, from a policy perspective, this will be achieved by prescribing a set and standardized uh, medical tariffs that victims of accidents submit to the fund as a result of motor vehicle accidents. There is no doubt that the current system is inequitable. This is because the payment of damages, loss of earnings and general damages per individual are assessed in relation to the person's earning capacity and potential earning capabilities, which is disproportionate to those that are deemed to have or be able to reach that earning capacity. Inefficiencies in the claims administration process is attributed to disputes being declared by both the plaintiff and rough attorneys solely to drag and prolong the settlement of the claim. The tactic has the effect of the legal cost being incurred even when it was not necessary to incur those costs. The drivers of this inefficiency are both internal operations at RAF and unprincipled legal practitioners. In conclusion, the dire financial situation of the RAF requires of us to find creative ways to ensure that the taxpayer receives value on the investment they make through the fuel levy without abdicating our responsibility to provide a social security net to those affected by road accidents. I will now invite the chairperson of the board, Ms. Tembelitle, to see be followed by the CEO, Mr. Collins Litual. They will unpack the progress made in, pro in improving the fortunes of RAF in line with the mandate I have given the board and progress in implementing the new model aimed at ensuring that victims of car crashes are the real beneficiaries. So I'm happy and I want to thank the media for being here because a lot of things have been written about RAF that they are hiding 300 billion, they are travel, we are running uh, uh, a, a, a spaza shop, even a spaza shop is better. Uh, we are running something that we, do, we don't understand what we are doing. But those who've got access to the media are bad mouthing, but we are not bad mouthing. We are here to account. So you are here as the media, ask any question. Where well, we can't answer because it's a legal process, we'll be given guidance. But the board is here, I've brought Lituano himself. You see, he's got a new suit for this occasion. <laughs> uh, 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 so, because I've said to them, we are running this thing on behalf of the people of South Africa. When we are questioned, we must not run away. We must answer. We don't work uh, under anonymous reports, sources. No. We, 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 we must be attended to if the need arises. And then uh, we must account uh, in relation to what is our mandate. Chairperson, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, MC. Thank you, Honorable Minister, and good morning to the Minister, Acting DG, fellow board members, CEO and executives of the RAF, and ladies and gentlemen of the media. When the RAF board was appointed towards the end of the 2019-2020 financial year, we inherited a financially unsustainable fund with a highly ineffective uh, op operating model. The fund had been technically insolvent since 1981. Some of the operational challenges included the following. The design of the RAF uh, scheme was uns unsustainable. The benefits offered were and still are much more costly than the funding that is available 
for the scheme through fuel levies, and there is no nexus between the revenue and the cost components of the funding. As a result, the outstanding claims were increasing year on year due to the registration of claims and slow settlement. During the 2018-2019 financial year, these had increased by 26%. The operating model we inherited was anchored in litigation. This resulted in a highly litigious environment, which re resulted in high administrative costs and contributed to delays in the settlement of claims. During the 2018-2019 financial year, the average REF administrative cost had in in increased by 16% year on year to 10.3 10 billion rents, with 7 billion accounting for the legal costs. The REF medical cost had increased by 45% in that same financial year. The REF claims liability had increased by 26%, and the requested but not yet paid component had increased by 24% during the 2018-2019 financial year. The average claims settlement values were increased by around 10% year on year. This was driven mainly by inefficiencies and fraud. Business processes were highly manual and with the poor ICT infrastructure environment. In giving us the mandate, the minister was unequivocal in that we needed to turn around the RAF and ensure that it is a sustainable entity. Some of the objectives we assigned the board included reducing legal costs, reviewing the operational model, and digitizing the claims management process as is already indicated. We proceeded to develop the 2020-2025 RAF uh, strategy, the five-year strategy, as part of the turnaround plan for the fund. The strategy is anchored on expediting settlement of claims and building a customer-centric organization. The key strategic outcomes included, these were of course in response to the minister's stated objectives were the development and implementation of a new operating model, settlement of all new claims within 120 days, reduction of legal and medical costs, development and implementation of the RAF medical tariff and med medical treatment protocols, implementation of an integrated claims management system. This would improve efficiency in claims processing and also help with the prevention and detection of fraud. Review of the RAF organizational structure to ensure that it was fit for purpose and to conduct a comprehensive skills audit. Almost two years, almost two financial years into the strategy, we have made great strides towards addressing the legacy challenges of the RAF. The following are some of the notable mm -hmm. achievements from the 2020-2021 financial year. We managed to finalize our inputs into the REF Act amendment proposals. A key input is the amend amendment a proposal for an annualized payment. This would replace the lump sum payment. I'm sure quite a, a few of us in this uh, uh, gathering are familiar with the show I Blew It, and quite a number of them are from the REF uh, payout and how people would get probably about five, four million, um, and within a year, they've blown it. And so this would also help us in terms of uh, dealing with that challenge, because those same people then come back into the government system um, and try and get some other benefits. We will be formally publishing the final RAF tariffs for implementation before the 31st of March in 2022. We are at an advanced stage of an on, of onboarding an implementation partner on the digitization of the claims management system for the REF. Uh, this ICMS uh, tender had been published on the 26th of February last year. We embarked on the review of the organizational structure for the REF to ensure that it is fit for purpose. To this end, we have finalized the macro structure and finalized the appointment of the CEO and CEO, CFO with other key executives to follow. 
The RAF saw a significant reduction in administrative costs during the 2020-2021 financial year. Okay. <laughs> Particularly the legal costs which particularly the legal costs reduced by just over forty percent, moving down to three point nine billion. Um, as you would recall, we found this at seven billion in the 2018-2019 financial year. We achieved a clean audit for the year twenty nineteen to twenty twenty. Although challenges still remain with the settlement of claims within one twenty days, we are confident that the implementation of the minimum requirements for claims lodgement and the integrated claims management system will assist in expediting claims settlements. To ensure that the public is fully informed of these changes, the RAF has embarked on a stakeholder engagement, engagement process. The first stakeholder engagement was held in Gauteng this past Tuesday. This will be rolled out to other provinces in the coming weeks. Um, on the issue of the current litigation, we have been briefed by our legal team not to discuss it. However, we can safely say that we tried to manage and resolve the matter without going to court, but were unsuccessful. We hold the office of the AG in high regard, and I think this needs to come across. Just because we are having litigation in one particular issue, it does not mean that we cannot work with the office of the AG, and we do not want to work with the office of the AG. So we hold this office in high regard. We will continue to work with the office of the AG as we are expected to under the laws of the country. I thank you. I will now hand over to the CEO uh, to take us into fuller details on some of the achievements I have highlighted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Program Director. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, um, the Acting Director General of the Department of Transport, uh, the Chairperson of the Old Oxygen Fund, uh, members of the board present here, members of the media and fellow South Africans. Good morning. I'm standing once again in front of you here in my new suit. <laughs> to brief you on the developments of the road accident fund and the progress on the new model uh, that we initiated close to about two years ago. Like any new model and the change that I brought in the quest to bring transformation, we have experienced both successes and setbacks. However, we are happy to report that we have had more progress and that we have experienced challenges. We were able to develop solutions that take us forward and ensure transformation of the road accident fund. South Africans will recall that when we embarked on this strategy, it was a two-pronged strategy in this transformation that is changing the current system by amending the RAP Act with a view to change to the RAP system in the near future in line with the policy that the Minister has already alluded to and that has already been published in 2011. We all know that RAP's bill could not proceed as envisaged and that is required by abolition of the delusional base scheme which uh, is fault-based. The perverse incentive that comes with such a scheme and the provisions of Section 19 of the RAF Act, which requires that one uses an attorney in lodging a representative claim, makes the system litigious and administrative cum cumbersome. It also does not encourage expeditious uh, settlement of claims, which result in long administrative costs driven mostly by legal costs. We have, over the past two years, stratified our liability book and in the process reduced administrative costs. We have brought in a proper queuing of our claims and ensuring that we pay the oldest debt first. We have embarked on a project to address the backlog both of representative claims and direct claims. We did this while trying to finalize new claims within 120 days, and that obviously created a difficulty of balancing the two processes. This just means that you had new claims that were coming in that were supposed to be finalized in 120 days, 
when you had uh, long outstanding claims that had not been finalized. So we had to balance that. We then discovered to our dismay that at least 90% of all claims do not have the required information for RAP to be able to make an offer and therefore settle the claim in time. It is now clear that the lack of minimum information requirement has made the system unworkable and that the reasons for the delay of the settlement of the claims. The direct claims had in the main been dormant with claimants not coming through um, and us not being able to trace them. These developments are creating headwinds in our transformation journey, which blindsided us when we envisioned this new model. However, we are clear that these challenges will not deter us from achieving the transformation agenda that we have embarked on. We have also faced a massive resistance and pushback from those that benefited from the past inefficiencies of the RAF. Those that benefited from not only the corruption, but the past practices that we found unsustainable, um, like what was known as fixed allocations. This was meant for big law firms and probably medium firms that put enough pressure on RAF to be paid first, notwithstanding the age of their debt. This resulted in fragmented RNYP, requested but not yet paid book, that some claimants owed more than a thousand days in debt, while some most, mostly big law firms owed less than 30 days in debt. We then embarked on the payment plan to pay debt within 180 days and started with older claims first. We encountered a backlash from those that used to get as much as 100 million of fixed allocation a month from a rough 3.5 billion monthly fuel levy income. We approached the court for a reprieve in terms of Rule 45A, as already alluded to by both the minister and the chairperson. Um, to suspend the court orders in order for us to allow proper stratification of this liability book. We also in the process picked up duplicate payments that were paid to law firms and started collection of these duplicate payments. Unfortunately, this development has pitted us against the representatives of the claimant and there, are a lot of, there is a lot of information that is being peddled to create the impression of an inclusion at the RAF. We have decided that we have to be more transparent and ensure that we keep our stakeholders closer and more informed about the development during the transformation journey. This will allow for stakeholders not only to understand the reasoning behind the decisions that we take, but also the contribution, uh, the, the, uh, to be contributors to the solutions in the transformation journey. As part of this transparency, we have decided to release the top 20 law firms that have been paid and the amount paid in the aging of that debt today. This will enable South Africans to know that nothing at the RAF is of any individual or any nepotism will be easily identified. We will be releasing this list every quarter in the interest of transparency. We will further enable payment uh, South Africans to hold us accountable to our commitment to introducing a more equitable payment system based on prioritizing the oldest debt in line with our 180 day payment strategy. I want to list all these law firms um, for you to know. Um, from the 1st of April 2021 to the 2nd of March 2022, the following law firms were paid, and these were the figures that they were paid and the average days of settlement of these payments. Number one is Kruger and Company at 395 million. Number two is Nandu and Associated at 394 million. And number three is A. Volmaras Incorporated at 348 million. Number four is Gerdnell Progorier at 332 million. Savage and Joste Adams Incorporated at number five at 331 million. Uh, VZLR Incorporated at 315 million. Sprite Incorporated at 302 million. Mpila and Associates at, three, at 265 million, Adams and Adams, Pretoria at 257 million, De Vries Shield, Shield Incorporated at 244 million, Trainia Tennis at 230 million, Franz Kitte and Posa at White River, uh, at the law firm, 229 million, Msamo at Tennis at 205 million, De Sosa, AC at 203 million, Lobart and Creek at 202 million, M. Kruger uh, and Pochinger at 199 million, Detroit Haverman and Lloyd at 991 million, 
Adendorf Incorporated at 181 million, Chochinchi Atenis uh, at 175 million, and Feather Incorporated at 174 million. That's the top um, 20. That is on capital payments. They range from an average of 321 days on average. Uh, that is uh, Sprite Incorporated, because at that time they owed us money in duplicates and we didn't pay them, and we had kept some money until they paid us to about uh, 166 um, days on average. Um, then we have got cost payments. Uh, this is our costs uh, that are paid to these attorneys. Um, number one on the cost payment schedule was Franz Kitze Posa of White River, 87 million, VZLR Incorporated, 83 million, Sprite Incorporated, 81 million, Adams and Adams Victoria, 79 million, Cardinal Procurators, 66 million, Van Nickers Attorneys, 62 million, Savage Jost and Adams Incorporated, 62 million, um, Helden Hayes Malaji, 49.3 million, Mpila and Associates, 45 million, Edeleng van Mikert Incorporated 44 million, Trenia Tennis at 44 million, Tifris Shields Shirt at 42 million, Salum Leroux Procurators at 38 million, Kruger and Company at 36 million, McRoberts Incorporated at 32 million, A. Volsman Runs Incorporated at 31 million, Disosa AC at 30 million, SQ Martin and Adrian Incorporated at Tennis at 30 million. Marias Basson Incorporated at 29 million, Adendorf Incorporated at 28 million. And these payments were also on average um, around 170, 280 days. So there, those are the law firms that have been paid at, at, at Road Accident Fund in line with our new schedule. And having regard to that, um, I think it's important, Minister, that we address this misinformation that is in the, in the domain of the media, certainly in regard to the so-called anonymous letter doing rounds in the social media and reported by some media publications, which seems to suggest that um, my friends are given preference and paid first at the Road Accident Fund. I have no friend in this top 20, nor any other. My, it is uh, in this list that claims were perpetually settled and paid in a period of a week. And um, I must categorically state that I have no such a friend and my declarations of interest are clear. So I declare every year who is my friend who is doing business with RAF if there is any and those declarations are there. I have no knowledge of this Radi Babi attorneys and who runs that law firm. It is fashioned in a way uh, Radi Babi it is fashioned in this way because I suspect the fact that the law firm settled this matter in Limpopo, which is my home province, must raise eyebrows and make the allegations believable. I then asked for our forensic investigation to investigate this and what we have found that the matter was settled purportedly in August 2021 and the payment was made 163 days later in January, making it in line with what a uh, rough uh, payment strategies. We have, um, we are going to release this uh, court order indicating the court stamp on which this court order was stamped. We are not going to stop here, Minister. We have uh, asked that uh, the forensic confirmation of this court order must be done to ensure that it's not a fraudulent court order uh, like we have had fraudulent court orders in the past. So we will leave no stone unturned in ensuring that we get the bottom of these allegations. Um, the aim must not be to uh, harass uh, other law firms in the name of those that used to get close to a billion a year from RAF. And now you can see the numbers. Uh, they are nowhere close to that minister and that is creating a lot of problems. We are also happy, Minister, that um, SIU has started their investigation. We are giving them our full cooperation we welcome this investigation as it will help uh, us not only to uh, uncover any graft at the road accident fund, but we potentially that we can recover monies that were corruptly siphoned from RAF over the past years. There is also a matter that uh, has been dealt with, and I think 
as the executive management minister, we support the, the views that are expressed uh, by the chairperson and yourselves about the strength, the need for good governance and accountability and the role that is played by the AGSA. We, key, we respect this office, we will continue to work with this office and we, we will implement the, the, the recommendations that they've given us and we we'll continue to do that in the interest of good governance and accountability. Um, we, Minister, would like to thank uh, yourself, the department, uh, the board, um, and everybody else in South Africa who has supported us through this journey. It has not been a, a, an easy one. We are enemies of people that want no progress in this transformation. We know why they say the things they say, but we are undeterred, Minister. We are going to turn around the rough. We will surely uh, make rough a better place, and I think posterity will vindicate us. Thank you so much. I see somebody at the back was wanting to clap. I see you. <laughs> Certainly moved by your remarks. Thank you very much uh, to the minister, the board chair, um, and to the CEO for those remarks. We also do have on my far right, uh, Mr. Mtun Zimadiya, who is the Acting Director General in the Department of Transport. Um, and if there are any questions that uh, I guess might be posed to him as well, he is on hand to respond to some of those. Um, but maybe before we get into some of the questions that colleagues from the media might have, uh, there might be a few areas. Helpful as we just do a brief panel to, to maybe unpack some of those and elaborate a bit further on some of what might have been mentioned, uh, which might give uh, the colleagues in the media an opportunity uh, maybe to pick up some of those issues. And I think one of them, uh, insofar as your remarks, Minister, is are concerned, has to do with the shareholder compact and the performance agreements uh, that you've gone into uh, with the entities and in particular the Road Accident Fund. Um, and I think many of our colleagues would be interested in the role that the executive authority plays um, in those compacts. What is expected of uh, the uh, Department of Transport insofar as that is concerned? Uh, but more importantly, what would also be the, the role of the entity itself insofar as the key performance areas are concerned? Um, and I guess in the context of the new operating model. So Minister, I think if, if uh, you can give us a brief response on that, uh, and then we'll take a look at a few other areas as well. I said Inslee. Uh, it's just for oh, okay. <laughs> Just for vibes. So I, I, I was going to suggest, uh, Aya, that uh, yeah. let's give the media first an opportunity. an okay. opportunity to ask questions, and then we respond, and then we can elaborate no, further, right. because we've spoken for a very long time, and mm. they've been uh, taking notes. Okay. So I'm afraid that they might skip some of the... No, that's, yeah. that's fine, then, Minister. So if you can hold on to that microphone so that you can respond to that, because it seems the one in front of you is just for vibes. Um, and what we might want to then do, uh, if colleagues can just raise their hand, please tell us the media house that you are from, um, and also, I guess, uh, the questions that you have. Um, so I can see one, two, three. There's a pillar in front of me, so I can't see if there are any other questions uh, behind that. But let's take the questions. Please, your name and the media house that you're from. Okay, Diazo? 